Hi, this is George, and you're watching The Return of the King Channel. The prophet Joel tells us, The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. On April 8th, an eclipse will appear precisely on the band of this fish in the constellations. Dr. Joseph Zeiss, in his book, Gospel in the Stars, describes as the constellations of the rapture. As the eclipse works its way over America, those in the path of the eclipse will see the sky darken and the stars appear. Venus will appear above the tail of the dragon, the dragon in the book of Revelation chapter 12, whose tail sweeps down a third of the stars of heaven and casts them to the earth. Jupiter and a comet will appear just above the head of the dragon. The dragon who wants to devour the child, the Christian. Jupiter represents the child from the Revelation 12 sign. The child, the dragon, seeks to devour. And here sits the child above the jaws of the dragon, but also in the constellation of the Lamb. The Lamb who starts the tribulation by opening the first of seven seals, releasing the four horsemen. But before the Lamb pours out his wrath on the earth, he snatches, he raptures the child from the jaws of the dragon and takes the child to God and his throne. Jupiter, representing the child, is days away from entering the constellation of Taurus, Christ the Judge, and the start of the tribulation. On the third day, the moon will have moved into the constellation of the Lamb, with what is now being called the Devil Comet between the moon and Jupiter. At Mount Sinai, God gave the Israelites three days to prepare before God met with them. On the third day, the tenth, Saturn and Mars will be in conjunction. Venus is above the tail of the dragon. Mercury, Neptune, and Uranus are all in locations that make sense in telling the story of our escape from the dragon. In the 1800s, Lutheran theologian Dr. Joseph Zeiss wrote the book, The Gospel in the Stars. Contained within these constellations is the story of the redemption of mankind. After Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, the plan to redeem mankind begins in Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. The redemption begins with the virgin birth of Jesus and his death on the cross, and ends when the lion of the tribe of Judah, the seed of the woman, Jesus, is found worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals, starting the seven-year tribulation. Notice where the head of the serpent is. It's directly in front of the lion of the tribe of Judah, ready to be crushed. In the fall, on October 2nd, 2024, a ring of fire eclipse will occur in the constellation of Virgo and a comet in the constellation of the serpent. The beginning of the end of the dragon's reign on earth. According to Joseph Zeiss, these are the constellations of the rapture. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is going to snatch the Christian, whose symbol is the fish, from the red dragon of Revelation chapter 12. The band of the fishes is on the neck of the dragon, the Holy Spirit-filled church restraining the dragon. After we depart, the restraining influence of the church on the dragon will cease. The next three constellations represent the tribulation. Taurus represents Christ the judge and the beginning of the tribulation period. Gemini represents Christ and his church, our heavenly wedding. Cancer represents heaven. At the end of this video, there will be a link to a video where I explain all of this in greater detail. The ancient Jewish rabbis believed the moon represented the Messiah to the Christian Jesus. It takes the moon seven days to reach the constellation of Cancer, heaven. Jupiter, symbolizing the bride of Christ from the Revelation 12 sign, is here in the constellation of the Lamb the Christian who is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. As the sun sets, the symbol of the Christian is directly above the head of the dragon, the serpent who wants to devour the Christian. 
At the rapture, Christ comes down from heaven and snatches his bride from the jaws of the dragon and takes her to heaven for seven years. Jupiter is just days away from entering Taurus. Taurus represents the start of the tribulation period. We are taken out before the Lamb opens the first of seven seals, releasing the four horsemen, starting the tribulation. In Revelation chapter 12, the male child is harpazoed, raptured to God and his throne. Jupiter not only represents the Christian, but also Christ and the throne room of God. In Isaiah 53 is contained a prophecy of the coming Messiah. It tells us he was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. Before Jesus was crucified, he was brutally whipped. His back is covered in stripes of blood. The stripes in the atmosphere of Jupiter are red like blood and flesh-toned in color. After Jesus died on the cross, a spear was thrust in his side. Blood and water came forth from the wound, confirming his death. The wound is the great red spot. The cause of the great red spot is still unknown, but God knows. In the ancient world, Jupiter was known as the king planet. The star of Bethlehem was created by Jupiter, the king planet going into retrograde motion and then remaining motionless for weeks over the king star Regulus in the constellation of the king, Leo, Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. In Revelation 12, 5, we read this, She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and his throne. In Revelation 3, 21, Jesus says this, The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures. Jupiter has four large moons that orbit the planet, symbolic of the four living creatures. The moons are named after their discoverer, Galileo. They are called the Galilean moons. Jesus was a Galilean. Jesus came from the town of Nazareth in Galilee. In addition to the four Galilean moons, Jupiter has over 75 smaller moons that circle the planet, symbolizing the angels surrounding the throne. I heard around the throne the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, When we escape the dragon via the rapture, we are not just taken to heaven, but specifically to God and his throne. On the third day from the eclipse, the moon will appear in the constellation of the Lamb. At Mount Sinai, God told the Israelites to be prepared for the third day, for on the third day they would meet with God. The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. This eclipse appears to be a three-day notice to the Bride of Christ that the trumpet is about to sound and her groom is about to snatch her away from the jaws of the dragon. This view of the heavens is from the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, looking west. It was on the west side of the sea in Galilee that much of Jesus' ministry took place. And the western shore is the most likely location of the story of the 153 fish. Contained within the account of the 153 fish is the rapture. The church age began at Pentecost, and it ends with the rapture of the church. The constellations of the rapture found in Joseph Zeiss's book, The Gospel and the Stars, are the same constellations that appear at dawn on Pentecost, regardless of which Jewish calendar is being used. On God's original calendar, also known as the Enochian or Essene calendar, Pentecost is always on the first day of the week, Sunday, and it's always the 15th day of the third month. That's why there's 153 fish, 15th day, third month, Pentecost. Everything you need to know about the history of the Jewish calendar and the true date of Pentecost 
can be found in this book by Ken Johnson. Contained within the account of the 153 fish is the rapture of the church. The age of grace, the church age, began on Pentecost, and it ends with the rapture of the church. The story of the 153 fish begins at dawn, and on every Pentecost at dawn, these constellations appear in the east. The constellations of the Lamb of God who pays the price to redeem the Christian, whose symbol is the fishes, both the dead in Christ and we who are alive at the rapture. In the rapture account found in Revelation chapter 12 and in the account of the 153 fish, the escape is from the sea. The dragon in Revelation chapter 12 is a sea serpent. The symbol of the Christian is the fish, the fish that were taken out of the sea and brought to Jesus, 153 of them. The catch was so large, the net had to be left in the sea. The sea is the dwelling place of the red dragon and the fishes. At the rapture, the dead in Christ rise first, and then Jesus is going to snatch the fishes who are alive out of the sea and from the jaws of the dragon. At sunrise and sunset, the constellation of the dragon is on the horizon, in twilight, giving it a red appearance, the red dragon. This is the view from the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, looking to the west just as the sun is setting. It's April 10th. It's the third day since the eclipse. As the sun sets, Jupiter and the moon will appear first. Depending on the brightness of the comet, it will appear with the stars that make up the dragon and the fishes. As the sun sets, the head of the dragon will appear in the reddish twilight. The Red Dragon of Revelation chapter 12. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Mercury represents the archangel. At sunset, it appears just above the horizon. The trumpet of God is symbolized by the ram's horn, the shofar. The constellation of Aries is a ram. The fish nearest Christ represent the dead in Christ. In the account of the 153 fish, Jesus is on the shore. He has a charcoal fire going, and he has fish with him. He's prepared those fish by cooking them over the fire. These fish came with Christ. They are dead fish. These dead fish represent those whom belong to him who have died before the rapture. The fire represents the fires of hell. But the fish are not destined for hell. They belong to Jesus. He also has bread. In John 6, 51, Jesus says this, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. At the rapture, the dead in Christ rise first. When we die, our spirits go to be with Christ. At the rapture, their spirits come down with Christ, and their spirits will be reunited with their bodies. The fish nearest the lamb is above the horizon. It's in the sky, in the air. They come with Christ. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. The fish that represents those of us who are alive at the time of the rapture is the fish in the water, above the tail of the dragon. In the account of the 153 fish, the catch of fish is so large, the net has to be left in the water. The water is the home of the dragon and the fishes. The dragon rules the sea. This is all symbolic. The dragon Satan is the current ruler of this world. Prior to the rapture, we are living in his world. We are going to be taken out of his world by Christ the Lamb. In the story of the fishes, Jesus tells the disciples, Bring some of the fishes you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus already has fish with him, so why would he have Peter bring the net ashore and count the fish? He's giving us clues as to when he's coming to rescue the fish still alive at the rapture. Why are we told the net is not torn? It's telling us that none that belong to him will be lost. 
nobody gets left behind. The fish in the water is above the tail of the dragon. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. This sign is completed in the same manner as the Revelation 12 sign. It uses the constellation above the dragon to complete the narrative. The head of Cetus consists of seven stars, the seven heads. Above Cetus is a horned animal. The head of Taurus is made up of ten stars, the ten horns. Within Taurus is the star cluster known as the Pleiades, or the seven stars, the seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. The dragon in Revelation chapter 12 is coming after the child who is about to be born. The fact that it's the tail that sweeps out a third of the stars of heaven is a clue. He's coming after the man-child, the Christian, whose symbol is the fish. Both Jupiter and the fish represent the Christian, found in Revelation chapter 12. Above the tail of the dragon is the fish, and above the head of the dragon is Jupiter, the child, ready to be devoured. The red dragon Cetus, the fishes, and the lamb are like the numbers on a clock. The sun, moon, and planets that move through the constellations are like the hands of the clock. Their location in the constellations tell us when things are about to happen. Next, we need to go back in time and see when his tail sweeps down a third of the stars of heaven and when the dragon stood before the woman. At dawn on May 30th, 2022, Jupiter and Mars go into conjunction above the tail of the dragon. The dragon's desire is to devour the Christian, the male child, who is symbolized by Jupiter. We are told the color of the dragon is red. It does nothing to enhance the story unless it's a clue to something else we need to know. It's telling us the planet that represents the dragon, just like Jupiter represents the male child. Mars, the only red planet, represents the dragon. Since the appearance of the Revelation 12 sign, this is the first and only time that both Mars and Jupiter appear together above the tail of the dragon. On May 30th, they go into conjunction above the tail of the dragon. In his book, Birthright, Timothy Alberino argues that in the past, Mars was the home of the dragon. He theorizes that the conflict described in Revelation chapter 12 will originate from the planet Mars. Mars was likely the seat of the dragon's dominion and the high command of his confederacy until it was reduced to a wilderness of rubble in the bombardment of Rahab. Since the day he was deposed from his lofty throne and exiled to the earth, the dragon has been brooding over his revenge and conspiring to rebuild the ruins of his ancient habitation. There is reason to believe that the dragon is mobilizing an extraterrestrial army on the planetary bodies in our solar system and perhaps other star systems in preparation for a final assault on the kingdom of heaven. It appears that Michael will launch a preemptive strike against the enemy's forward operating bases before the return of Christ. John gets a glimpse of this battle that ensues. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels also fought, but he could not prevail. And there was no place for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was thrown out. The ancient serpent, who is called the devil, and Satan, the one who deceives the whole world. He was thrown to the earth and his angels with him. This war clearly occurs in an eschatological context as it preludes the rise of the beast, the tribulation of the saints, and the battle of Armageddon. Following the dragon's tail sweeping down a third of the stars of heaven, 
The next part of the narrative that needs to be completed occurs on October 14th, 2023, coinciding with this ring of fire eclipse within the body or the womb of Virgo. Mars is positioned precisely where it should be to fulfill the next verse. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. The only part of the story left to be fulfilled is the rapture. And that brings us back to these constellations. The constellations of the rapture, according to the book, The Gospel and the Stars, and the story of the 153 fish. The massing of the sun, moon, and all the planets in the constellations of the rapture. The coming war between the dragon and the lamb. Timothy Alberino, in his book Birthright, says this, There is reason to believe that the dragon is mobilizing an extraterrestrial army on the planetary bodies in our solar system, and perhaps other star systems, in preparation for a final assault on the kingdom of heaven. Mars and Saturn are in conjunction in the sea, near the fish who are alive, both symbols of the dragon. Venus appears above the tail of the dragon, again near the fish who is alive. Jesus in Revelation 22, 16 makes it very clear that he is the bright morning star, Venus. But in Isaiah 14, 12, we are told of a lesser morning star, the fallen angel, Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The sun appears just below the horizon in the constellation of the fishes. The ancient Jewish rabbis believed the sun represented God. Just like you cannot look at God, one cannot look at the sun. At the rapture in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, we the fish are taken to God and his throne. These are all of the objects in our solar system visible to the naked eye. They are all in precise locations to tell the story of the rapture and the war in the heavens. The army of the Lamb, headed by Michael and his angels, versus the dragon and his angels. The army of the dragon is gathered around the tail of the dragon, Venus, Mars, and Saturn. The tail of the dragon that casts a third of the stars of heaven to the earth to do what? to devour the male child of Revelation chapter 12, the Christian alive at the time of the rapture, in the waters, the fish above the tail of the dragon. Above the jaws of the dragon is Jupiter, the Christian in the constellation of the Lamb, who is going to rescue the fishes from the army of the dragon. In the story of the 153 fish, the fish are taken out of the waters and brought to Jesus. The fish we see in the waters above the tail of the dragon. Jupiter was in the constellation of the fishes from about May of 2022 to May of 2023. Jupiter is the moving symbol of the fish in the water. It's now in the constellation of the lamb. The fish have been brought to Jesus, the lamb, just like in the account of the 153 fish. The live fish that couldn't be loaded into the boat because the catch was so large was left in the sea, and at the request of Jesus, Peter pulled the net ashore and brought the 153 fish to Jesus. The fish are taken out of the sea where the dragon rules the sea, symbolic of his current ruling of the earth, and the fish are brought to Jesus. There are two more planets, Neptune and Uranus, In Roman mythology, Neptune is the god of the sea. Neptune appears in the sea, above the tail of the dragon. These myths of the gods who ruled the earth didn't come out of thin air. They came from the dragon, the ruler of this world, Satan. Neptune is another symbol of the dragon's army. Uranus in Greek mythology is known as the god of the sky. Uranus appears in the sky just above Jupiter, a member of the dragon's army. There's a war in the heavens, and that war has to do with the rapture. In the constellation of the Lamb, you have symbols of the bride and bridegroom, Jupiter and the moon. There are two symbols of the dragon, the twin-tailed comet, the devil comet, and Uranus. 
When we meet with Christ, we meet in the air, in the sky. Ephesians 2.2 speaks of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, of reference to Satan. Above Jupiter is Uranus, the god of the sky, symbolic of the ruler of this world, Satan. This is the only location in the heavens, the story of the rapture, found in Revelation chapter 12, and the account of the 153 fish can occur. All the celestial objects are in the exact locations to tell a pictographic story simultaneously of the rapture and of the war between the dragon and the lamb. This is the view at sunrise from Jerusalem on April 10th. Venus, the bright morning star, is above the tail of the dragon. Just above Venus and to the right, Saturn and Mars are in conjunction. When Jesus, the true bright morning star, the Lamb of God, takes the fishes home, the bride of Christ, the world will be left with the dragon of Isaiah chapter 14, Lucifer, the morning star who fell from heaven, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. At sunrise and sunset, it's the dragon that appears on the horizon, cast in a hue of red. The dragon and his army are now cast out of heaven, and they are all on the earth. The tail in the morning, the army of the dragon he cast to the earth, and in the evening, the head of the dragon, Satan. So what does this all mean? At a minimum, this completes the signs found in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Could this be the day? It very well could be. Time will tell. There's so much more to see than what I've presented here. The rest of the story can be found in this video. I released this video on the sixth anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign, September 23rd, 2023. Contained within the geography of Egypt, the Red Sea, and Mount Sinai is the rapture of the church. Red dragons dwell in red seas. And when you overlay the constellations of the red dragon and the fishes on the Red Sea, they align and they tell a story. The eclipse occurs on the band of the fish that represents those of us who are alive at the time of the rapture. It occurs on the same gulf of the Red Sea that God parted for the Israelites to pass through and escape from the dragon Pharaoh. The Exodus is a type or foreshadowing of the rapture. To watch this video, click on the link appearing on the screen. Make sure to hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.